One of the most amazing stories in the scriptures' is history is the transfiguration of Jesus. But why did Jesus have to meet Elijah and Moses? Let's get right into it and trust me, this one's going to surprise you. Following his revelation to his disciples of his true identity, this momentous occasion took place, transporting them to Caesarea Philippi. About 25 miles to the north of the Sea of Galilee is where it's situated. They came at a shrine dedicated to honouring Augustus, the Roman Emperor. It's thought that Jesus inquired about people's perceptions from his followers at this momentous site. Let's take a look at a few verses stated in Matthew chapter 16. The verses from 13 to 20 are looked into here. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Returning to the previous point in the narrative, it's evident that Jesus asks his disciples a crucial question as he looks at them. Who exactly do people think the Son of Man is? was the query. In response, the disciples shared a variety of conjectures regarding the individuals. While some thought Jesus might be the prophet Elijah or Jeremiah, others assumed that he was the resurrected John the Baptist. Others, however, believed that he was one of the other great Old Testament prophets. All their responses were quietly heard by Jesus Christ. Following the expression of each disciple's response, following their responses, Jesus asked his disciples a direct and personal question. Jesus then made the decision to pose another query to his followers. This time, the question is more direct and intimate. He immediately questioned them, but what about you? He then posed another query. Who do you think I am? Simon Peter, with assurance, Peter said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That was all it took for him to acknowledge Jesus. He accepted the divinity of Jesus Christ in particular, and his role as the Messiah identified him as long-awaited Saviour and the Son of God. Jesus Christ reacted to Peter's remarks by saying, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for it was not by flesh and blood that you were shown this. We can take a look at the exact chapter and verse where this was mentioned, and this is where it gets really interesting. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 17 to 18, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Following this thought-provoking conversation, Jesus made another announcement, something truly amazing. Not even the forces of darkness could hold such a momentous event. Jesus started outlining his objective to his followers right away. He was going to Jerusalem, where he was going to be crucified after suffering at the hands of religious officials. On the third day, he will rise once more. The gospel message was founded on this revelation. Six days later, John, James and Peter were taken by Jesus. He was transformed in front of Peter, James and John on a lofty hilltop after they were led there. His countenance glowed like the sun during the transformation and his attire took on the brightness of the daylight. What happened during this transfiguration? You might want to pay close attention now. His face glowed like the sun and his garments took on the brightness of the light as it changed. As we study over Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 to 5, you'll have a much clearer understanding. What we witness in these occurrences is the realization of God's purpose for humanity. Jesus confirmed the founding of his church as a result of Peter's profession of faith, indicating a new covenant and a hopeful future. Jesus' glory was made evident during the transfiguration. 
hinting at his eventual triumph over sin and death via his atoning death and resurrection. The Christian religion is based on these events. It highlights the potency of divine revelation and the work of redemption accomplished by God's Son, Jesus Christ. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am very pleased. Other than Jesus' outward manifestation during the Transfiguration, the appearance of the long-deceased Moses and Elijah conversing with Jesus Christ was the other remarkable event. Their presence served as a reminder that God's plan has always been in motion, with Jesus acting as the prophesied Messiah. For the disciples, it was a both profound realization and proof that Jesus was the Christ, the long-awaited Savior. The dialogue that took place between Jesus and Moses and Elijah serves as an example of the cognitive comprehension and communication of the deceased individuals who now comprise God's kingdom. They stand for those who, like Elijah, will be raptured without ever dying, and those who, like Moses, will die and be with God once they pass away. Together, they represent the entire Old Testament. Elijah stands in for the prophets, whereas Moses is the law. This unique meeting of Jesus, Elijah and Moses with the disciples represents the unification of the Old and New Testaments which center on Jesus. That's why Peter recognizes the gravity of the situation and offers to build three shelters for Jesus, Moses and Elijah. Even as Peter was finishing his sentence, something else remarkable occurred. A brilliant cloud engulfed them, and from within came a voice that declared something. To find out what he declared from the cloud, let's read in Matthew chapter 3 verses 15 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Why do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The revelation overtook the disciples, who collapsed to the ground in shock. There was reverence mixed with terror in their hearts. Matthew chapter 17 verse 46 contains the details of this historic occurrence. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. When Jesus returns to build his entire kingdom, it provides a glimpse of splendor. It highlights how high Jesus Christ is as God's Son, and how both the Old and the New Testaments are fulfilled in him. All the lines dividing the past from the future merge in his presence. Every creation recognizes him as the supreme king, deserving of divine authority. Jesus instructed them to stand up and not be afraid after he noticed their fear and gently caressed them. Looking skyward, all they could see was Jesus Christ. This moving experience made it clear that Jesus Christ is more than just a prophet or one of God's many obedient servants. He is better than all of them. The services of Elijah and Moses on the mountain eventually directed people towards Christ, the objects of all scripture.